Good morning, and welcome to St. Matthew African Methodist Episcopal Church. We're so pleased that you decided to join us this morning on this beautiful first day of Advent. Let's go to the throne room. Most precious and loving Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day that we have received. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hide your humble serve behind the cross so that your people can see Jesus and not me. None of me but all of thee, O oh Lord. Use me for your glory. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. For you are my Savior, my Lord, my Redeemer, my everything. To you I give all glory and honor and praise. You are the love of my life. And in the mighty name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, on this first day at Advent, we will begin by lighting our Advent candle. The Advent leaf is an adaptation of an ancient practice that dates back to pre-Christian times. Candles were lighted around a wreath during the festival of winter solace to celebrate the return of gradually lengthening daylight. Today, the Advent wreath custom retains the circular shape with four candles. Three of the candles are purple to represent penance and longing. They are lit the first, second, and fourth week of Advent. The rose-colored candle is lit the third week of Advent to symbolize joy and anticipating the birth of Jesus. Evergreen is symbol of eternal life. Purple ribbon symbolizes penance in preparation for the Lord's coming. To us, it is an anticipation of his second coming. In addition, Advent challenges us to stay within the environment of prayer and song, scriptural reading, fellowship, and holy action that counters the glass commercial use of Christmas candles from Thanksgiving on to sell anything and everything. Advent is about how our church members should go about preparing itself to enter into the Christmas season. Take heed, watch, for you do not know when the time will come. We watch and wait in anticipation for the coming of the Christ child. We prepare our hearts and minds for his coming. We submit our lives to the transforming power of his continued return. The first candle in the Advent wreath represents our anticipation, anticipation, both this year and in years gone by. Light the candle, the Advent candle one, now the waiting has begun. We have started on our way. Time to think of Christmas Day. Candle, candle burning bright, shining in the cold winter night. Candle, candle burning bright, fill our hearts with Christmas light.
they were brought back both were out of breath, and all three stood before the king. To the first he said, were you not told not to run until I give you the signal? So why did you run? I forgot, said the man. The king asked the second man the same question. He said, I thought that you were given the signal in just a moment. I thought that you would get the signal in just a moment. And when I saw the other man running, I decided to run too. Isn't that how we do things? We know what's right, but just because everybody else is doing it, we think we ought to do it too. Have mercy on us. Then the king asked the third man, and why didn't you run? And the man replied, because you did not give me the signal. He answered, my son, said the king, I knew that you could run, but I didn't know that you could wait. So the young man found that the test was not a test in doing, but in waiting. The Lord is saying to us today, I knew that you could run. I knew that you could work with all your strength. But can you wait on me? For some of us, this is a hard lesson to learn. Because sometimes it feels as though the Lord has forgotten us. And there are times when we grow weary. Many times we long for the waiting to come to an end. But when we learn to bear the weight, ooh, that's a good word, to bear the weight, it helps us to be patient in the waiting. Sometimes we just got to ask God, help me to wait on you, Lord. When I get above myself or ahead of myself or I get ahead of you, help me, God. Teach me how to wait on you. Waiting on God was one of David's secrets of being a man after God's own heart. God was his confidence, and he trusted him in every aspect of his life for guidance and for instruction. Psalms 25, the 25th chapter, and the fifth, the third through the fifth verses says, no one who hopes in you or waits on you will enter, will either be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope, glory to God, or faith is in you all day long. Sometimes we want to put our faith in people, in things, in our jobs, in the things that can't Grant us heaven or hell or favor with God. We have to put our faith and our trust in God and God alone, beloved. Nothing tries our faith more than learning to wait on God for answers to prayer. And waiting tests our submission to his will. But it strengthens our faith in his ability to fulfill our every need. Glory to God. Don't you want your every need to be fulfilled? Not just some. You want all of your needs to be fulfilled according to his riches and glory. Waiting on God means that we have the faith to believe that he holds our lives in the palm of his hands. And everything, beloved, not some things, everything falls in under his power and his authority. Glory to God. If we run ahead of God, or even think that we need to help God in any way, we will find ourselves exhausted and ready to quit. All we have to do is remember the story of Abraham and Ishmael. Don't allow your impatience to wait on God cause you to conceive an Ishmael when you could have an Isaac. Don't allow your impatience to cause you to think that God has forgotten you. Beloved, God has not forgotten you. God has not forgotten you. Wait on him. Praise his holy.
of the Lord. Don't allow your impatience to cause you to make hasty decisions that you will regret in the future. Don't let your impatience cause you to feel that God has turned his back on you. So you think that you have no one else to turn to? So you seek out other methods trying to fill a void that you can never fill. I don't know about you, but sometimes I have to ask the Lord to help me to learn how to wait on him. Sometimes I have to encourage myself by speaking the word. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. In my patience shall I possess my soul. I wait, hallelujah, on the Lord. My soul doth wait, and in his word do I go glory to God. I have to remember all that God has done for me and everything that he has brought me through. I have to remind myself that God did not bring me this far. Holy, praise his holy name to leave me. Glory to God. And that he promised me that he would never leave me or forsake me. Then I began to count my blessings, glory to God, by saying, Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Lord, I thank you, glory to God. I am prosperous and in good health. Lord, I thank you for my family. Lord, I thank you for my food. Lord, I thank you for clothing and shelter. Glory to God, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for a sound mind. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Even when there were times when I may not have felt like I was loved or I even loved myself. Lord, I thank you that I'm not what I used to be. And Lord, I thank you that I'm striving to become the person that you want me to be. Lord, I thank you that quitting is not an option for me because I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. I can't quit, praise his holy name, and be in Christ. I can't have faith and be in fear. Praise his holy name. I can do all things through Christ and who strengthens me. Praise his holy name. Because I am the creator. Because I am the creator of all things. Says that I am somebody. Glory to God. And it ain't over until God says it's over. Praise his holy name. It ain't over until God says it's over. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I know I'm talking to myself. Praise his holy name. And I pray that it's blessed with you as well. God in all his sovereignty has shown us time after time after time after time again that he has always had his eyes on us. He wants each of us to succeed and to fulfill our destiny. He knows our abilities. But he wants us to show him that we have enough faith in him that he can trust us to wait on him and to see us through. So we wait, beloved, with hope that does not disappoint because we know that in his time, glory to God, and according to his perfect wisdom, that the Lord brings all things together for the good of those who love him. And how do we know that, beloved? Because we've tried him. Glory to God. And we know that he is a God that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ever ask or think. That's how we know. I tried it and I know it. And I know it to be a promise keeper. Glory to God. Praise his holy name. And he cares more about me so much more than I care about myself. Praise his holy name. The King James Version of the Bible says that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And the New International Version of the Bible says those who hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. To hope and the Lord is to trust him fully with our lives. It involves looking to him 
as our source of our help in time of need. Those who hope in the Lord are promised God's strength to provide them in the midst of exhaustion and weaknesses of suffering and trial, the ability to rise, hallelujah, above their difficulties like an eagle that soars into the sky and the ability to run spiritually without tiring and to walk steadily forward without fainting. God promises that God promises that if his people will patiently trust him, he will provide whatever, whatever, whatever is needed to sustain them. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11 and 1. The Holy Spirit says, I am giving you the substance of faith. He gives us the grace to avail his purposes until the precise moment when he gives evidence that he was working it all out for our good. Wait. Wait. Just wait on God. When we wait on God, we never quit. Our faith increases. I'll say that again. When we wait on God and never quit, our faith increases. While we are waiting, our strength is renewed. When we wait on the Lord, we allow ourselves to be renewed and transformed into the image of God as we mount up with wings as eagles. We will have one eagles gloriously soaring with incredible power and grace, continually mounting up, guiding, gliding with such apparent ease. When we wait on the Lord, we too rise above our troubles. The winds of life may blow and the waves of trials and tribulations may crash against us. But in the midst of them, we find ourselves surmounting them and enduring them while God transforms them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God becomes the wind beneath our wings. Glory to God. Empowering us in spite of obstacles to experience his perfect grace, glory to God, at work in and through us. I love that song, He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother. It's like God is carrying us. I love that poem about the, the footprints in the sand. But whenever we're going through something, that's when God is carrying us. Praise his holy name. We have to believe that. We have to trust in that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We shall mount up with wings on of, of strength. We shall soar above trials and tribulations. And as we rise above our circumstances, we become like the eagle. And God gives us a new perspective on life. Praise his holy name. By waiting on the Lord, we soar above situations that may try to bring us down. And we begin to see life from his perspective. Glory to God. We can see beyond the limits of our present existence into God's larger purpose. Not only for our lives, but for the church, for the nation and the world, so that he will be glorified. So, beloved, as we continue to wait on the Lord, we exchange our feeble strength for God's, which sustains us for the journey. Praise his holy name. You're not alone. God said, I got you. I got your back. Praise his holy name. It's at that time when he's carrying you. He knows you better than you know yourself. He knows your needs. And he's there. Praise his holy name. Yes, this is a spiritual journey, but one that God will see us through because the word of God promises us that we shall walk and not faint. We might get tired, but keep on walking, glory to God. We might get weary, but keep on walking. We might be disappointed, but pick up the pace and just start running. We might become frustrated, but keep on running. Don't look back and don't look down. Just look up, hallelujah. 
Look up to Jesus. Glory to God, the author and finisher of your faith. Praise his holy name. And before you know it, God is giving you the signal and you're soaring like an eagle. Higher and higher, rising above life's challenges, rising above life's obstacles, rising above life's disappointments. Why? Because you're waiting on him. Praise his holy name. You see, that's why quitting, beloved, is not an option. For to quit is to give up on God. And we don't want to do that. Now that's an oxymoron. You can't be a quitter and be in Christ. Can't do that. You have to choose one or the other. Which one will you choose? The choice is yours. Amen. Amen. Praise his holy name. Glory to God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you and I praise your holy name. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. Thank you, Lord, for this word today. Quitting is not an option. Not. We can't quit and say we trust in you. We can't quit and say that we believe in you. We can't quit and say that there is a God that sticks close to us as a brother or a sister or anybody else. Lord, we just thank you today that you just tell us to wait and trust and have faith in you. And we shall do that today from this day forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, this is the time to do it. If you're in a backslidden state, this is the time to come back home. If you're in need of a church home, St. Matthew would love for you to come and be a part of our family. But if that's today, if that's you today, beloved, and you need to accept Jesus Christ, this is the time to do it. And if that's you, say this prayer with me. Father God, forgive me of my sin. I know that I'm a sinner. But I know that I'm a sinner saved by grace. Come into my life. Come into my heart. I want to make you my Savior and my Lord. I was thinking about quitting. But I know with you in my life, I don't have to worry about quitting. I don't have to worry about giving up. Because I know when I'm tired and I'm weary that you will carry me through the rest of my journey. I need you today, Lord. Come into my heart. Come into my life. I want to make you my Savior and my Lord. I believe that I shall receive in Jesus' name. I want to make you my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart right now today. I believe in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer with me, beloved, please feel free to inbox me on St. Matthew, uh, uh, our Facebook page. And I just pray that um, this word bless your soul. I want to be a follower of Christ.